Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for for attending the chat, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, human psychology, the human element of intelligence gathering. And uh, there's quite a few things that we're going to chat about. Um, there's no hacking and cracking tonight. Um, this is all about you as the investigator and your investigation. So earlier it was mentioned um, Lockhart's exchange principle um, in forensic science, which states that every contact leaves a trace. Our digital interactions continually leave behind a myriad of traces. In the realm of OSINT psychology, these digital footprints are not just about where we go or what we do online, but they intriguingly reveal our biases. Every like, share, comment, or even the pattern of our online engagements can unconsciously reflect and amplify our inherent biases. So as we delve into understanding the human element of intelligence gathering today, we'll explore how these digital traces not only reveal our individual behaviors, but also illuminate the biases that subtly guide our online interactions. The concept is a testament to the power and the influence of our digital presence in the landscape of intelligence and psychological analysis. So let's just have a look here. So this is what we're going to, sure that went a bit fast, sorry about that, let's go back. This is what we're going to chat about today. Um, we're going to chat about the key biases, what is a bias and why is it important, and recognizing these biases, cognitive distortions and their impact on OSINT, the impact on investigators and investigations, mitigating these biases and distortions, key biases and examples, objectivity. I'm going to give you a couple of strategies for enhancing critical thinking. I'm also going to give you a self-check tool, which you can amend and fiddle around with yourself. We're going to wrap up. And then I'm going to give you a suggested reading list. So I asked Dali GPT, hang on, it's a bit fast, sorry about that, to, I put a picture in and I said, create a professional image. So this is what they've given me, Sharon Knowles from South Africa, portrayed with a warm smile, medium length, dark hair, professional outfit, set against the serene South African landscape. It's a weird landscape, but let me show you who I am. So this is me. I'm a certified cybercrime investigator. I enjoy learning. I've got two master's degrees and a few other pieces of official paper. I'm not a psychologist. I like to travel. Not really an espresso drinker. I call myself an active animal activist keyboard warrior. I'm often banned or Facebook for suggesting what should be done to people who abuse others and animals. I like to read. I have three heroes, Batman, Hercule Poirot, Sherlock Holmes. So we're going to start off with a quote from Hercule. With method and logic, one can accomplish everything. Even though he's a product of fiction, his methods often reveal real-world applicability. Investigators can learn a lot from his approach, refining their techniques to solve crimes with precision and clarity that have made him a legendary figure in the world of detective fiction. In our roles as OSINT investigators, we often venture into a vast sea of information. Recognizing and mitigating human biases in this context is not just important, it's essential for accurate and effective investigations. So in our search for the truth, it's crucial to be aware of how our biases can distort our investigations. So the key biases that we're going to talk about today, I've chosen 10. Confirmation bias, anchoring bias, overgeneralization, black and white thinking, availability heuristic, groupthink, emotional reasoning, social engineering vulnerabilities, the bandwagon effect, and the sunk cost fallacy. So as we go through the presentation, 
and I will explain each bias to you. Think about the way that you do your investigations, um, the way that you collect your information and how your personal perspective has an impact on them. So let's first talk about what is a bias. Well, a bias is a tendency, an inclination towards or against something or someone. These biases can be conscious, explicit or unconscious, which is implicit. And they often stem from human tendencies to simplify information processing, draw upon our personal experiences or adhere to social norms and stereotypes. It's quite important to recognize our biases to ensure that intelligence is as accurate, reliable, and objective as possible, which is vital for sound decision-making. So if we have a look at the importance of recognizing these biases, accuracy. Biases can lead to selective collection and interpretation of data, compromising the accuracy and objectivity of intelligence. Comprehensive analysis. Recognizing biases ensure that a wider range of sources and perspectives are considered. And then decision-making. Informed decisions require unbiased, accurate information, otherwise they might be based on flawed intelligence. So let's talk a little bit about cognitive distortions. Cognitive distortion is an exaggerated or an irrational thought pattern involved in the onset or perpetuation of psychopathological states. Now, it sounds like quite hectic words, but this is like depression and anxiety. Cognitive distortions are thoughts that can cause individuals to perceive reality inaccurately. And an example of this would be, I had the worst luck in the world. So I want to talk about a case of um, a young man, Marcus Hutchins. And in the context of an OSINT, OSINT investigation, an OSINT investigator can be found to have a bit of cognitive distortion in the context of Marcus Hutchins. Hutchins he was a UK resident. He was arrested in 2017 for creating and selling malware called Cronus which was designed to steal online banking credentials. The case is notable because Hutchins became widely known in the security community only after he played a key role in stopping the WannaCry ransomware attack. So overgeneralization, investigators could have overgeneralized Hutchins alleged involvement with Cronus, overshadowing his significant contribution to halting WannaCry. And this could have led to a skewed perception of his character, his actions, painting him solely as a malicious actor. Black and white thinking, the case might have been perceived in a black and white manner, categorizing Hutchins either as a hero for stopping one a cry or a villain for his involvement with Cronus, without acknowledging the complexity of his situation and the possibility of multifaceted roles. Confirmation bias. Once a narrative about Hutchins' alleged criminal activity was established, there could have been a tendency to interpret all available information in a way that confirms this belief, potentially overlooking evidence that might suggest a different story. So I will give you a YouTube link to go and watch the story of Marcus Hutchins. I don't want to give anything away, but it is quite a good example of how biases crept in to the whole investigation. And I urge you to go and have a look, listen to the story, think what you would have done, how you would have interpreted the, the data because it doesn't matter, there's no right or wrong. If there are 10 OSINT investigators busy on a case, we all gonna have different perceptions. We all gonna have different understandings. So it's okay to think differently to everybody else in the room, but the most important part important part is obviously verifying data. So these examples illustrate how cognitive distortions can influence the perception and interpretation of investigators' actions in OSINT investigations. It's crucial for investigators to be aware of these potential biases 
and strive for a balanced and evidence-based approach in their work. So now we're going to talk about the impact on investigators and investigations. So we look at reduced objectivity. Cognitive distortions can lead to a skewed analysis impacting the objectivity required in intelligence gathering. Misinterpretation of data. Investigators might draw incorrect conclusions, leading to ineffective or counterproductive outcomes. Overlooking key information, important data might be disregarded if it doesn't allow with a distorted viewpoint. Compromised decision-making, based on distorted intelligence, can lead to strategic errors, security lapses, or even missed opportunities. So how do we mitigate these biases? Well, awareness training educating analysts on common biases and distortions, having diverse teams, including individuals with varied backgrounds and perspectives, structured analytical techniques using methodologies that prompt critical thinking and challenge assumptions, regular review and feedback, encouraging peer review and critique of analysis to identify potential biases, continual learning, keeping up to date with best practices in intelligent analysis and cognitive science. And that's why it's so great to come to a summit like this and learn what different investigators have to say and engaging with people, even those people new to, to, to OSINT. It's good to hear other perspectives, hear other understandings, and that's what builds us as a community. So let's look at those key biases again. So these are the 10 that we're going to go through again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the biases and I'm going to use movies. And who doesn't love a good movie to de demonstrate bias? Okay, so confirmation bias. Individuals favor information that confirms the existing beliefs or hypothesis, often disregarding contradictory data. This bias can lead to selective data gathering interpretation and recall. So an example would be an OSINT investigator believes that a particular group, online group is planning a cyber attack. They might only focus on messages that support this theory, ignoring posts that suggest the group is benign or unrelated to cyber threats. So the movie I've used to demonstrate this is Argo. In Argo, the CIA analysts favor information that supports their plan to rescue hostage, hostages using a fake movie production, potentially overlooking other viable options. This illustrates confirmation bias, where information aligning with pre-existing beliefs is preferred. The next one we're going to talk about is anchoring bias. First piece of information encountered is known as the anchor has a disproportionate influence on subsequent judgments and decisions. So an example of this could be if an investigator's initial finding is that specific IP address is associated with malicious activity, they may give undue importance to this information in their analysis, even if later evidence points somewhere else. The movie that I'm going to use to explain this is a movie called... Uh, Zero Dark Thirty. In Zero Dark Thirty, the investigation into Osama bin Laden's location heavily relied on the initial piece of information about his potential courier. This anchoring could have led to a narrow focus, potentially missing other critical evidence. Overgeneralization bias. Drawing broad conclusions from a small set of observations often leads to stereotyping or oversimplistic reasoning. So here an investigator might conclude that all members of a particular online forum are involved in illegal activities based on the actions of a few individuals. The movie I used here was Minority Report. Um, in Minority Report, the pre-crime unit arrests people based on the prediction that they will commit a crime. Overgeneralizing from limited precognitive visions to definitive future actions. 
The next one we're going to look at is black and white thinking bias. Perceiving situations in extreme absolute terms with no acknowledgement of middle ground or complexity. Here an investigator might categorize websites as entirely trustworthy or completely untrustworthy. Failing to recognize that credibility can vary and should be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. Here, I chose Eye in the Sky. In Eye in the Sky, the characters deal with the moral dilemma of a drone strike, often resorting to black and white thinking, either completely for or against the strike without considering that there could even be a middle ground. Availability heuristic bias. Relying on immediate, easily recalled examples when evaluating a specific topic could lead to a skewed perception of reality. If an if a investigator recently dealt with a phishing scam originating from a particular country, they might overestimate the prevalence of cybercrime from that country in future investigations. So here I used a movie called The Imitation Game. In the imitation game, analysts and decision makers prioritize deciphering codes based on recent attacks or threats. Influenced by the availability heuristic, where recent or easily remembered events seem more relevant and common. Groupthink bias, a situation where consensus seeking within a group suppress suppresses dissent and appraisal of alternatives often leading to irrational decision-making. An OSINT team might quickly agree on a certain interpretation of data without thoroughly considering other possibilities due to desire to maintain harmony in the group. And yeah, you might say, oh no, not my team. But think about some of the discussions that you've had within the team around a case where people have disagreed or somebody said, oh, okay, let's just go with that. The social network. The social network was the early team at Facebook, and they made decisions based on group consensus, potentially leading to groupthink, where dissenting opinions or critical thinking might be suppressed for harmony. Emotional reasoning bias. Decisions are influenced more by personal feelings than by objective evidence. An investigator's personal experiences with a particular issue could lead them to interpret open source data in a way that aligns with their emotions rather than the facts. Here, a few good men. Characters make decisions or form beliefs based on their emotional responses rather than evidence, demonstrating emotional reasoning, especially in the courtroom scenes. Social engineering vulnerability bias. This is about the susceptibility to manipulation or deception. It's a risk factor in intelligence work where human interaction can lead to disclosure of sensitive information. So here an investigator might receive a seemingly legitimate request for information that is actually a social engineering attempt. So it could be a case that you're asked to work, work from. You have to do your due diligence and actually even have a look at the person from whom you're receiving the case, the client, um, the client or the organization. If they fail to verify the source or intent, they could inadvertently leak confidential information. So Catch Me If You Can was a fabulous movie. Frank Abagnale Jr. exploits social engineering vulnerabilities to perform cons showing how biases and trust can be manipulated in intelligence gathering. And this is a great movie. I urge you to watch this. So the bandwagon effect bias is a propensity to believe or do something because other, believe, other people believe or do the same thing. And the case here, I'm look, uh, the movie I looked at is uh, a movie called The Big Short where the majority of the financial world blindly follows the housing market boom, illustrating the bandwagon effect, where people do something primarily because others are doing it. 
sunk cost fallacy bias, continuing a course of action because of previously invested resources, time, money, effort, rather than current rational analysis. So an investigator might persist in a line of inquiry, like monitoring a particular network that isn't really yielding useful results, simply because you've invested such a lot of time and effort in it. Money more, traditional scouts initially resist the new analytics approach, sticking to their old methods due to the sunk cost fallacy. Continuing a behavior as a result of previously invested resources, their time, their money, and their effort. So objectivity. The journey through various cognitive biases from confirmation bias to the bandwagon effect has underscored the complexity and challenges in maintaining objectivity in intelligence analysis. We've seen how these biases, if unchecked, can actually skew our perception, leading to incomplete or inaccurate conclusions. In the realm of OSINT, where data is based and varied, the risk of falling prey to these biases is significantly high. I'm going to show you four images. What I would like you to do is to think about the four images, think what your initial reaction is, and try and identify what bias you have. Okay, so let's look at some strategies for enhancing critical thinking in OSINT work. Diverse information sources. Rely on multiple varied sources for information will help you counteract confirmation bias and provide a more balanced view. Structured analytical techniques using methods like ACH, analysis of competing hypothesis, ensures that different viewpoints are considered and analyzed systematically. Peer review and collaboration, working in teams or seeking peer feedback can provide alternative perspectives, reducing that risk of falling prey to biases. Continuous learning and training, regularly updating knowledge about social engineering tactics and cognitive biases equips you as OSINT professionals with the latest defensive strategies. And then questioning assumptions, regularly challenging one's own assumptions and those of others helps maintain a healthy level of skepticism. And embrace uncertainty, accepting that not all information is definitive or complete encourages a mindset of continual questioning and verification. So here's a self-check tool, and this is one that I sort of built as a way to, to check myself. Um, you can, we'll, we'll give it to you, and you can amend it, change it however way you want. So we look at the initial assessment, and we define objective and list our initial thoughts and hypothesis. Bias awareness, list the potential biases and reflect on personal influences. Information gathering, seek diverse sources and document evidence. You've heard a lot of the presenters tonight talking about documenting evidence and um, focusing on both supporting and contradictory information. Analysis, evaluate all evidence, consider alternative explanations and seek peer review. It's all about verifying the information that you have. Reflection and adjustment. Reassess biases and adjust hypothesis as needed. Final evaluation. Draw a balanced conclusion. Ensuring transparency about uncertainties and limitations. Feedback and learning. Conduct a post-investigation review for biases and engage in continual learning. Additional tips. tips. Implement regular breaks and maintain healthy skepticism. So some of these steps you might not want in your self-check self tool. And obviously it's all about the way that you investigate and what you want to use to make sure that you're objective. So looking at 
the presentation, um, OSIN psychology, understanding the human element of intelligent gathering. I've delved into the intricate world where human cognitive cognition and intelligent analysis intersect. And I think the key takeaway from the presentation is the recognition that understanding and managing our cognitive biases is not just a professional skill, but a necessity in the field of OSINT. As we continue to navigate the ever evolving landscape of information and technology, we have to remember the human element with all its complexities. It remains a central piece in the puzzle of intelligence gathering. Our ability to recognize and adapt our cognitive limitations will ultimately define the effectiveness and reliability of our intelligence analysis. And then I'm going to end off with a couple of books. Um, Spy the Lie, formal CIA officers teach you how to detect deception, thinking fast and slow, the psychology of intelligence analysis, influence, the psychology of persuasion, blind spot, hidden biases of good people, super forecasting, the art and science of prediction, Data and Goliath, the hidden battles to collect your data and control your world, the art of deception, controlling the human element of security, the black swan, the impact of the highly improbable, information wars, how we lost the global, get, global battle against disinformation and what we can do about it. And that is all from me.